Morning, family. I have two mics, but one mind and one mouth, which you often gets me into trouble. Good morning and welcome to my heart and welcome to your spiritual home and our beautiful Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living. And welcome home to Bernard Cord, who has just come back from the UK after the successful launch of his book. And just welcome, 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 and to all those. Yes. And all those who join us in consciousness and watch us on the World Wide Web. I really want to talk about Resist Not Consciousness. And this morning's epigraph in the uh, Santa Man magazine also speaks to it, for it says in like quote, it's taken from the textbook, the Santa of Mind textbook, and it, page 464, and it says, quote, no one can give unto us but ourselves, and no one can rob us but ourselves. No one can give unto us but ourselves, and no one can rob us but ourselves. I'm so glad to see my um, jeweler, Garth Sangonetti, um, taking his place. Welcome, Garth, because he's in the story. You know, friends, it's easy to feel good when good things happen to you, and you say, yeah, man, it's my consciousness cause it. But when things don't go so well in our lives and affairs, it's a big frog to swallow to acknowledge that we also attracted that. Am I right or am I not right? Now, <laughs> let me share this, this personal story with you. For years, it has to be 20 or 30 years, I have worn a gold bangle on this hand. Um, it, 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 I've had it for a long time, so it's kind of small, so it never comes off. Okay. And to get it off, is, is a bit difficult. It actually scrapes me. The knobs on the end actually scrape me when I'm trying to, to pull it off. So it, I never take it off. Last Sunday, as I headed out on the street to watch the carnival revelry, um, I wasn't in costume. <laughs> Nothing is wrong with being in costume, but there was very little costume this year, and there's a lot of Reverend John. Um, anyway, I was going to watch... And as I was heading out of my neighborhood to walk down the road, um, my neighbor said, you're going into that whole carnival crowd with all that gold, gold jewelry? And I said, yes. I'm not only wearing my jewelry, but I also wear Julia Squeezer, who is my um, six-foot-long royal python. He's a, a constricting snake. And he was wrapped around my neck. And so I said, when I go to watch carnival parades, revelers keep a, a respectful distance because of you know, my, my status as a minister, I'm sure. And, uh, <laughs> and I always have the choice you know, placement along the route. Policemen and um, carnival marshals all defer to me. I don't know how they all know I'm a minister. but um. So I wandered out, and end of the story, part one. On Thursday evening... Oh, I need to tell you that my car, my Bluebird of Happiness, my little Honda Fit, the driver's window only goes down about a third of the way. It can go all the way down, but when you do, it's hard to get it back up. The ratchet slips, so I, I just keep it a third of the way down. And all my other windows were open. It was 7 o'clock in the evening, nice and cool. And in Halfway Tree here in Kingston, I stopped at a, a traffic light, a red light, and out of nowhere, a young man arrived and started snatching the, the gold bangle from my wrist. I did resist evil because I, I, you know, I yanked my hand back. But um, there was a struggle, and I was trying to get the window up, and he was trying to open the doors, which were locked, and um, eventually the light turned green, and I drove off, minus the bangle. So, you remember I say, you know, when things don't go the way you think they should, we're going to what we call truth student syndrome. How could that happen to me? You know, I name reverend. People give me space on the carnival route to watch parades. Uh, so as soon as I got, I got through halfway tree, I pulled over on the side and I said a prayer. I prayed for the young man to know that his consciousness would be flooded with the knowing that he doesn't have to receive his good and feed his children or his family 
by depriving other people of their good. And with that, I released it. I just said it, it reached its destiny, and so I released it. End of story, part two. On um, Friday morning, at our morning devotion, my flatmate and I, um, Tony, I shared it with him. And I then vowed that that's the last time I was going to mention it. So I didn't talk about it when I came to work, came to the temple. I didn't tell um, our, our admin professional, Janet Morris Henry. I didn't mention it to Reverend Anne. I just kept it to myself. Still feeling a little deprived, but letting it go. My first appointment on a Friday is with a, a, an old friend who comes every Friday to do a meditation. Listen to how the universe works. She comes to do a meditation, her regular meditation on Friday, and she's wearing a gold bracelet, the, the latch of which um, is defective. So her daughter says, you know, when we're finished here, I really should take this bracelet to God Sanguinetti uh, and have him fix it. Her, no, her daughter is visiting from Ireland. So I said, Steph, you have so much to do while you're here. I need to see, to see God anyhow. So I'll take it for you. She said, you sure? I said, yes, I need, I need to see God. So she said, thank you so much. So I put the bracelet in an envelope, put her telephone number and all the, you know, the information on it, and said to Janet, I'll soon be back. I'm going to see God, Sanguinetti, and got into my car. I started the car, and on the console between the two seats is my gold bracelet. Wow. Wow. Now, I told you that it's hard to come off because it, you know, it's, the knob scraped me. I had no scrapes on my hand, and the bracelet was absolutely straight. It, the evidence had just straightened out and dropped. So I got back out of the car and came in and told Janet right away and said, just listen to this demonstration. I told herself and Reverend Anne, and Reverend Anne said it didn't belong to him because life is consciousness, and you can only maintain what belongs to you. So I thought, Wow. What am I to learn from this? And the master teacher says in um, Matthew 5, 39, resist not evil. <laughs> Friends, in the Science of Mind textbook, Ernest Holmes, who gave the world the great teaching known as the Science of Mind, writes, and I quote, when Jesus said, resist not, he meant that non-recognition of evil is the only way to avoid it. This is true according to the law of cause and effect. For what we persist in recognizing, we persist in holding in place. Which is exactly why I had said, I'm not going to talk about this and tell everybody. You know, your natural thing is to tell everybody. I thought, no, I won't talk, I won't talk about it. When it was missing... Um, Holmes continues, um, this is true according to the law of cause and effect. For what we, per we persist in recognizing, we persist in holding in place. And he continues, that which we refuse to recognize, we neutralize, and it is no longer there so far as we are concerned. End of that quote. So when you concern yourselves with the presence of God within you and all that it wishes to reveal through you, then you are free of trying to overcome anything or anyone. There is nothing or no one for you to overcome. Or resisting what we believe evil to be only creates our further experience of it. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So Jesus said further, agree with your adversary quickly. And I always wondered about that too. But you see, the same thing applies. When you agree with your adversary, you are really giving him or her the right to be his or herself. To think for themselves. It doesn't mean that you're going to embrace what they stand for or agree with them. But instead of fighting down their opinion or arguing about it, you release them to be themselves so that you can be about your father's business, which is to be Yourself, your full and divine and whole and perfect self that you were created to be. So here's the first part of your assignment for this week. This week, 
your mission should you decide to undertake it, is to avoid contradicting or arguing with anyone. It's a big, a big a tall order. <laughs> avoid contradicting or arguing with anyone. This is so funny because my, my, my mother would pick a quarry with my father over some thing he had forgotten to do, you know. And he would say, yes, dear. And she'd say, don't yes, dear me. I want to argue. <laughs> you know, I want to quarrel. Yes, dear. You know, what <laughs> used to drive her wild. So try it this week. Just do not contradict or argue with anyone. No matter, or you know, sometimes you're just urgent. You can't let them get away with it, you know. Uh, they're talking absolute rotten nonsense. Just say, I hear you. And see how that works out for you. So when you do that, you free yourself of their viewpoint having any power in your life. Reverend Tammy used to tell the story of the woman um, who was listening to the practitioner who was listening to somebody complain about all the evils in her life. And as she was doing this litany of evils, the lady was just saying, it ain't so. No, it ain't so. And the woman must have said, what do you mean it ain't so? It's so. But no. When you don't recognize something, you take away the power from it. Which is exactly what the master teacher meant when he said, I agree with your adversary quickly because when you pull against them, you are giving them power and it takes your energy too, eh? It's exhausting for you to be constantly fighting against whomever or whatever. Just stand on the, your opinion and your principle and it's such a powerful thing for us to say, in my opinion. Just simply, in my opinion. I hear you, I respect what you're saying. I have another opinion. Bless you. Can we agree to disagree if you have that kind of relationship? But when we get vexed in Jamaica, what we say? If we're just having a, a friendly discussion about cricket or football or whatever, cha, you are an idiot. You don't know nothing about cricket. You see what we have done? We have moved from a discussion about the game to what? A personal attack on somebody's humanity and somebody's divinity. Instead of just saying, well, in my opinion, this is the better team. In my opinion, this is the way things should be done. And having said that, you can just hold your corner without any argument with anyone. Uh, Reverend Emma used to say all the time, I don't have to walk around saying I'm a woman, I'm a woman, because it is so obvious. Um, I don't walk around saying I'm a woman, I'm a woman either, because who I am is obvious. So it's the same thing when you're arguing with someone, don't state the obvious. And this week, just avoid contradicting anyone whatsoever. Agreed? Okay. One of my favorite Psalms is Psalm 91. Now, it's, it's popularly known as the Psalm of Protection. Why are you laughing, Denise? Yours? Okay. Psalm 91 assures us, and I quote, He that dwells, anybody know it? In the secret place, what? Of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Unquote. Now, this is a powerful reminder, friends, that when you are self-aware, that is aware of the presence of God as being the only power in your life, the only reality of your being, then you live in the shadow of its eternal activity within you. So, when you dwell in the secret place, you are invincible. You don't have to argue with people. You don't have to, uh, you know, get into, into quarrels and, and head on butting our foreheads with people who, who don't hold your point of view and who can't see things from the place in high consciousness which you see them. So you are always experiencing your own beliefs and your own consciousness, right? Last week at the, uh, at the adult correctional facility on uh, Tower Street here in Kingston, we, had, we shared a little book with them called Life is consciousness. And last week, one of the participants said, you know, bells were going off in my head when I read that, I read that um, booklet that you gave us because I became 
very aware that it's my consciousness that has me where I am. And that if I don't like where I am, all I need to do is really begin working on my consciousness, on changing what my belief is, my deep belief and my deep conviction about life, about people, about circumstances, and about what is happening to me. So when you dwell in the secret place of the, of the Most High, you are experiencing the highest and the best of yourself. And from that viewpoint and that vantage point, you can look out at the world and see the highest and best of every self. You know, I really wish I could, I could sit down and talk with that young man who tried to drag the bracelet off my hand. Because it's, it's such a, a, an easy thing to shift your perspective. Which is why Jesus also said, turn the other cheek. He didn't mean that you are to, if you get slapped on one side, you are, to, you are to allow yourself to be abused thereafter in perpetuity. What he was saying is, when you turn the other cheek, so I'm looking so, and if I turn the cheek, I'm looking so. You are taking another perspective. You are looking at it from a different angle. And when you look at things from a different angle, you see them differently. Am I right or am I right? Yes. So the way the law works is, as soon as you give recognition to the presence and power of God within you, it takes over and directs mind to create all your experiences in, according with, in accordance with your divine nature. It doesn't match itself to anybody else's. It fits itself to what your belief system is and what you tell yourself constantly is the truth about you, your life, and your circumstances. So the other part of your assignment is to include Psalm 91 in your daily spiritual practice this week. It's a little long, but just take the time to read it mindfully, remembering that you are always living under the shadow of your own identity. A lot of people are living under the shadow of self-criticism, the shadow of old hurts, the shadow of old mistakes, the shadow of who do me what and who is against me. Banish that shadow by shining the light of truth and allowing that light to illumine your consciousness from the highest octave of spiritual expression. And the thing about it is Sometimes the change takes time, but really it can happen in the, the twinkling of an eye. It doesn't need to take centuries. Just the intention, setting your intention to begin to look at things from a higher perspective and a higher consciousness of being immediately shifts how the universe is responding to your thoughts. So I've stopped talking about gunmen, for example. How can you label somebody a gunman? What does that mean? You know, somebody with a gun is a gunman. Um, so somebody with a... Uh, <laughs> no, or somebody with a, a pen, Reverend Michael writing. He's a, what, a pen man? No, that's Lorna Nicholson. She's a pen girl. <laughs> as are all our attorneys at law. But, you know, and then is your surgeon a knife man? You know. So let us stop labeling things, except to label them good. And to know that when they have an appearance of other than what you regard as perfect, you can rename it. You can say, I know the truth about this person. I know the truth about that young man in halfway tree. And I have prayed for him every day since I found I didn't pray for him Thursday morning. I was still vexed. But I have prayed for him. I have prayed for him. Yes, you know, I, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know. But as of Friday, I have prayed for him every day. Because it has to be. He can't be. He must be in his 20s. I didn't even see him good. But you, you can't go from now through your life believing that the only way you can have anything is, is by living that, that kind of way. It doesn't make sense. 
you know? And it's really so, so amazing that the universe would put myself and Reverend Michael and Reverend Anne and Carol Charlton in the prison system here and then say, now prove me now <laughs> if what you're teaching is what you really believe. And um, I just thought, wow, this is, this is really amazing, an amazing lesson. So I want you to really read Psalm 91 mindfully this week and remember that since you're always experiencing your beliefs, you're experiencing your own consciousness. And since the reason that this is so is because the consciousness of yourself is always acting upon mind to create the body and experience of yourself, read it and know that you are not living in the shadow of your past. You're living in the shadow of the Almighty. Wow. I mean, what a difference it makes when we we step out of the shadow and say, I live as God lives and God lives as me in the light of the truth of my own divinity and the divinity of all people. So read Psalm 91 and regardless of what is taking place out there, know that those who live in the shadow of God's presence within them, the presence of God as you, will walk with every situation and through every situation with authority, compassion, and love, experiencing the joy of being and the exhilaration of personal, professional, and professional success. I want us to affirm, and I'll read it and you can just repeat it after me, I am the image and likeness of God. Together, I am the image and likeness of God. I live and move and have my being in the secret place of the Most High. I live and move and have my being in the secret place of the Most High. I eternally express and experience love. I eternally and, and experience love, beauty, abundance, and success. I am unique. I'm not convinced. Hear you. I am unique. I am unique. I am, I am special. I am God individualized. You know, a, a friend of mine um, recently <laughs> shared with me he wanted to be rid of the garbage of yesterday. And he wanted to be free of the repeated experiences with the same types of problems and note the same types of people. You ever notice that? You seem, to, you seem to repeat different names and maybe different addresses, but the same thing over and over. You know why? Because you haven't learned the lesson. Yeah. So it, it, it keeps coming back in different guises to say, see me here, you haven't dealt with me, you haven't learned with me. So... He balked at, the, at my suggestion that the only way he could free himself of yesterday is to be fully present and involved in today. And he said, but I don't understand you, John. I am fully active and present in today. I'm a member of my church vestry, and I, you know, this and that. And um, he was telling me how present he is. And I just said, so he said, I'm not hankering after the past. I said, no, I don't think you are. But in the last 20 minutes, you have told me three times how hard done by you were by your ex-wife and that the reason you can't get back on your feet is that she took you to the cleaners. He said, I, have to, I mentioned that today? I said, you mention it every time we talk. I said, so, you have moved beyond your divorce of five years ago. You are still living under the shadow of that negative experience. And until you let it go, you are going to... You can't move on. Silence. You see, when sometimes the truth, the truth slaps you in the face, you have to think, oh, Lord, let me just hug this up and sit down upon it because it is true. Friends, today is the action of this moment. And it's the only time you have. No. N-O-W. Never on wait. You know, the master said to the thief on, that was crucified on the side, and he said, remember me when thou comest into my kingdom. And what did the master reply to him? 
today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Not next week, not next year, not when you get to heaven. No, today. And again we're told in, in 1 John, no are we the sons of God. We don't have to wait on it. We can claim our divinity. We can claim the magnificence that we are now without delay. So that knowness allows us to have a great purpose and to live that purpose and to accomplish something that only you can achieve. Nobody else can do it. You have come to do it. You need to identify it and get on with it. Uh, and if you don't know what your purpose is, it may be a good idea just to sit with a practitioner and talk it through, or with one of your ministers, because it is a very important uh, assignment to know why you are here. Not here this morning at the temple. I know why you're here, and I'm so thrilled. But why you're here on the planet, what you're here to accomplish, and it's a special assignment, and you need to be doing it. And you'll know, you'll know when you're doing it because you will feel fulfilled, you will feel joyous, it'll be, you look forward to getting up and going out and doing what you have to do every single day. Now are you the sons and daughters of the Almighty, not in the future. told you about the client. Okay. At our New Year's Eve goal, shop, uh, goal setting workshop, I, I, I laugh at myself all the time because, you know, when you stand up here and talk, you're really talking to yourself as well as sharing with, with the audience. At the New Year's workshop, I spoke about the importance of decluttering and that decluttering, not only physical things, you know, the drawer full of stuff that you'll never use again or the cupboard full of clothes that can no longer go over your hips. Um, but also getting rid of old concepts of yesteryear that no longer fit your soul's evolution and your progress on the journey. And I had to laugh at myself because shortly after that New Year's workshop, which of course, as you know, was in January, uh, in January I found I had saved uh, a newspaper. Uh, I must have saved it because I wanted to read an article. But guess what? I couldn't remember what article it was I wanted to read. But why I laughed was it said... Two more shopping days to Christmas. Long after it had served the purpose of my yesterday, it had no relevance at all to my today. You have to look around your home and see how much things you, you, have, you, have, you have held on to, uh, you have saved, that you have, because you're going to get back to it, or um, it, it has some kind of meaning for you. And you know, some, you can't move on if you're holding on to yesterday. And that applies even to the pleasant experiences. Sometimes we can't move forward because we're still hankering after the good feeling we had in 1943. Well, it's now 2018, you know, and you need to move on. Even the good ones you need to let go of so that you can, you can continue your journey into the next great experience that you are here, the next great accomplishment that you are to have. So... I want to end just by um, asking you to affirm if I can find it. Oh, before that, I want you to I want to read it, read you this meditation uh, from the Science of Mind textbook. It's called it's titled "The Secret Way." Um, this, there is a secret way of the soul which all may know. It is the way of peace and love. This secret way leads into places of joy and into the house of good. It is the way of the spirit and all may enter who will. I tread the secret way of good, the path of peace, and I enter into the secret place of the Most High. The secret place of the Most High is within me. And this is what I want us to affirm together. The secret place of the Most High is within me. Together? The secret place of the Most High is within me. In a half voice. The secret place of the Most High is within me. In a whisper. The secret place of the Most High is within me. In your heart. 
And to your neighbor say, the secret place of the Most High is within you. Namaste. The secret place of the Most High is within you. Namaste. The secret place of the Most High is within you. Namaste. And then I would end with a beautiful poem attributed to the classical Sanskrit writer Kalidasa, and it is titled The Salutation to the Dawn. You might want to just gently close your eyes for this salutation, if it's comfortable for you. Take a deep centering breath. Look to this day, for it is life, the very life of life. In its brief course lie all the verities and realities of existence, the bliss of growth, the glory of action, the splendor of achievement. For yesterday is but a dream, and tomorrow is only a vision. But today, well lived, makes every yesterday a dream of happiness, and every tomorrow a vision of hope. Look well, therefore, to this day. Such is the salutation of the dawn. Take a deep breath, my friends, and as you gently open your eyes, look well, therefore, to this day. God loves you, and so do I. Namaste.